been real busy the last uh, several days, haven't had time to deal with the garden. And I've had some things going crazy here in the last few days, so. This tomato here, she's doing all right, considering uh, the temperatures that we've been putting up with. This is that Purple Dog Creek that I've really been trying to grow for a couple years now. Some tomatoes on there. Um, but, you know, the predictable leaf curl. I mean, that's with all plants, they, especially tomatoes and things like that. They will curl, curl their leaves as a sign of stress with heat and things like that, but it won't harm the production and whatnot, really. So don't panic if your leaves are curling in a little bit, you know, in the heat and all that. Uh, this is that volunteer cherry. It has totally gone out of control. It was out of control from the get-go. I think about the only way I can actually contain this thing is to start uh, cutting off growing tips because it puts out a million growing tips every which way. And it's just, it, I mean, it's crazy. But I don't like the fact that it's so dense. Um, that's a good area for bugs and disease and things like that to carry on in. So I probably will, even though this thing is just loaded. It's loaded with tomatoes and blooms try to control it a little bit. I mean, it'll produce more than enough tomatoes than we ever need as far as cherry tomatoes. We've got peppers coming out every which way. This one's got about six on it. Another. Uh, actually, some of them are getting almost to picking size. Uh, you know, coming out. Peppers are doing fine. Uh, some of them are being shaded a little bit by the tomatoes that are in the box with them, but I think it's actually kind of helping them a little bit. They look nice and green and uh, I'm not seeing any issues with the blossom end rod or anything. Uh, this tomato here is a black crim. It's having a little trouble with the heat. I'm going to have to be a little more uh, with the with uh, trying to get the blossoms to uh, pollinate and whatnot. I've heard it, it, it's, it can handle heat, but it's having a little struggle here. It, there are some tomatoes on it, but uh, I'm going to have to help that guy along and give him a little extra boost. Uh, here's the Rutgers. Uh, I think this is Bobby's, one of Bobby's Rutgers from his seeds. And, and judging by the clusters that are, you know, how it's putting out little clusters like that, uh, uh, I'm pretty sure it is. And I'm real happy it's a good, healthy grower. I probably could have trimmed them a little better, uh, but I'll let it go. I'll just keep tying them up. Um, big rainbow. Uh, this guy has been showing signs of Fusarium wilt, and I've been trimming it and pruning. And, uh, you know, I've tried some other things just in case it wasn't that, but I'm pretty much sure it's Fusarium wilt. And I'll show some more about uh, diagnosing Fusarium wilt. Uh, when I get a chance. This here's a pink brandy wine. He's got him some nice tomatoes on there. He's doing good. He's got quite a few actual. He's probably got a dozen tomatoes on him. He's not very big. Of course, he's in a five gallon bucket, so he's not going to grow uh, full size. Uh, they're pretty much, they're huge plants. This is going to kind of keep it down, but he's still producing well. Um, people, a lot of people say they're not big producers, but actually, uh, I found that they're actually pretty, pretty big producers. Uh, yeah, on par with, well, I mean, look, uh, at least in my area, they're pretty much on par with most other tomatoes. This is a Cherokee Purple. I haven't been able to keep up with this guy. Like I said, I've been gone for several days and haven't had a lot of time in the garden. And he's it started uh, sprawling and drooping. Um, and I lost a huge major branch, so he's looking kind of peaked right now. He does have some nice tomatoes, quite a bit of production. The branch that broke off had probably about six tomatoes on it, which is, that hurts, but that's okay. He's got a long way to go. Some aphid infestation and things going on here, but I'm trying to stay on top of it. Here is the one that I replaced. This is that pink brandy wine that I put in place of the one that had the really um, mutated growth. He's doing a lot better. Got a little, little uh, experimental pepper guy here that I, I'll show some more about later on. I've also got jalapenos growing. I've got a couple of these plants, and they're pretty well, hey, they're pickable. Uh, even though they might could get a little bigger, it really helps when you start picking things for them to start producing more. The onions, I've knocked them down because they were browning. I went ahead and knocked them down. I will probably pull all these uh, in the next day or so. They're pretty much jumping out of the ground. I've already pulled several, and we've ate them, and so they're doing real well. But maybe I'll show a video about onions a little bit uh, you know pull them out let them kind of season and season for a couple couple days in the sun if you're not going to have any rain or you can put them on racks and let them kind of air out and they'll build a skin over them and then they'll keep longer if you I mean you could pull one now and go ahead and use it it won't keep long 
uh, but there's nothing wrong with that and I've already had a few that are very very sweet these are just regular old sweet medium sized sweet onions nothing special yeah and this was an experiment just see how they did in this box I didn't plant a whole lot and another thing is I succession planted these rows I planted this row and then a few weeks later this one a couple weeks later this one but they've all seemed to kind of mature at the same time which is kind of different and some of them have grown you know considering how many weeks are between these uh, they're they're the same size so that's interesting something I didn't expect Bosch is in full throttle um, little cantaloupes cooking along he's got some little babies on him uh, we will take a closer look at him once it gets going a little better the one in the pot here uh, he's doing good but you know you get your leaf, leaf droop in the midday sun uh, the best thing to do is water them uh, give them some water what's happening is they're sweating or transpiring as it's called but to you and I it's they're sweating faster than they can take up water is what is happening and it's a defense mechanism they're hot they're putting they're sweating to keep cool um, just water them and they'll perk up um, the soil may be moist but um, uh, not moist enough for them to take in the water as readily without a lot of work so whenever I have tomatoes or plants that are drooping like that I give them a shot of water if I can and that usually perks them right back up and it knocks kills that stress if you just let them do this every day and then pick up at night droop every day that's just stress that's when you start getting into blossom and rot issues and things like that. So give them water. Give them a drink. Uh, they're eye level. Now, of course, the box is knee high, so, but still, they're quite impressive. Quite impressive. These are some of the largest squash leaves I've ever seen <laughs> in, in, in my experience, you know, growing. And they're just laden with, uh, laden with uh, squash. These are some more experimental uh, peppers that I've been working on as far as some breeding things I've been doing. Attacked by worms a little while back. I've got this big basil plant beside it, which is going to seed. I've been picking it like crazy. I mean, we can only eat so much basil. The worms attacked the basil, the peppers, and they attacked my tomatoes over there. So I know some people say that basil is a, a deterrent to caterpillars and worms. I've never experienced that in my garden. Uh, they'll attack they'll attack the uh, basil just as quickly as as peppers and tomatoes um, I just don't I've not experienced that in my garden uh, you know but I have read where people say that I think it's a great companion plant and maybe some people get confused with that you know a companion plant versus a plant that repels bugs for that particular variety but anyway that's just my personal experience the worms were attacking this basil just as heavily as the peppers and my tomatoes out there and I had to spray and kind of knock them down and it worked it's using organic spray UBT and uh, knocked them all down and I just sprayed the areas where they were a little bit nothing heavy the carrots uh, I'm gonna pull them up today it's getting too hot and I'm having to deal with watering them and, and things like that well you, you know get to that point and uh, they can start getting woody it can start cracking just like a tomato if it dries out and you, then you water it real heavy or it rains you know they all split and crack same thing happens with carrots and they can start becoming a little bit bitter and whatnot so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these guys because like I mentioned in my other video you can pull carrots at any size and, and the smaller ones are actually in my opinion a little more tasty than the big ones I've pulled quite a few out of here they're about 10 8 10 inches in length which is pretty much full size for this variety and uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull all these guys because I've got some other things that go in this spot. We've got all the oregano we need, or oregano, depending on where you live, I guess. Um, and these are starting to bolt a little bit. And it reseeds and comes back next year. Okay, here's my other big rainbow that was in another pot. And uh, as I showed, the other one has that fusarium wilt. This one had the same problem. Apparently this variety is very susceptible to fusarium wilt. And I'll, I'm going to put up another video just showing uh, how to detect Fusarium wilt. Uh, kind of what it looks like and some of the kind of little telltale signs. This plant had the same problem. As you can see, I've had to heavily trim one side of this plant. And he's kind of hanging in there, a little droopy. Poor guy. But the big rainbow is um, a whole lot more susceptible to Fusarium wilt than all my other tomatoes in my area. Another Purple Dog Creek, doing really well. I'm going to have to keep an eye on this guy because this branch, I've, I've got two main stems. 
So I'm gonna have to do some creative tying and uh, he's doing all right. I mean, of course these guys, uh, these two I'm showing here, they went out a lot later than my other tomatoes. So they're just now getting around to producing blossoms and whatnot. Unfortunately, it's very hot. So I'm gonna have to help them along a little. Delicious that I was gonna experiment with and just try to grow a big tomato off of. Uh, it's showing some weird growth and it's showing some uh, some type of a mold issue or something here. I'm not sure what that is yet. Uh, it could be a fertilization thing. You know, I did put some uh, organic fertilizer in here, maybe a little too much, but there is some weird stuff going on here. I'll just have to keep an eye on that and try to uh, determine what's going on there, what to do on that. I, I'm, it's just early stages, really not sure what to do on that uh, and what to diagnose there. Another thing, as I've been going around showing you guys my garden, I've been cleaning my hands. I've not been rifling through plants that have fusarium wilt and then going and touching other plants and things. Be very careful of that. If you don't have to touch your plant, don't touch it. I know it's hard to do. It's a hard habit to break. I've yet to break it. You know, try not to do that because you can spread something that you don't even know or are aware that is going on. So, especially if they're wet or damp, don't ever go through your plants when it's wet. There's a million things that can harbor themselves in a drop of water. Uh, so I'm gonna set up my other geo bin, transfer this stuff over, fork it over, and turn it upside down. Uh, just haven't had time to. Plus, it's been extremely hot. And uh, but I'm getting to it. I'll probably do that in the next couple of days, and maybe show some of the show a little of that or something. But uh, thanks for watching.